Tomorrow is October 1st. Fall has arrived here in Canada. The leaves are changing color, and a new season of constellations are painting the night sky. Fall has some incredible deep sky astrophotography targets. The Andromeda Galaxy, Pleiades, and many of the emission nebulae in Cassiopeia, to name a few. By far my very favorite comment to see in my videos is, I've just got all my gear together, and I'm taking my first shot of Andromeda tonight. I remember the intense feelings of excitement when I started. Maybe I romanticize about the emotions this hobby creates a little too much. Regardless, that's why Astro Backyard was created. So please join me here in the backyard for another night under the stars. Another night taking pictures of objects in space that are millions of light years away. This is Trevor from astrobackyard.com. We're here for another night of astrophotography in the backyard. And uh, it's getting a little late. What do we got? Uh, 11.57, it's about midnight. Uh, just the way things are right now with the uh, transition of the uh, seasons and the constellations, uh, what I really want to shoot tonight, uh, I can't start tracking past the meridian until uh, about now. So very, very soon I'll, I'll start on my project. Uh, but of course it's been dark since about 8 p.m. So I grabbed some more photons on a previous project actually the The target I shot in my last video the wizard nebula the moon is out tonight, which means uh, I'm shooting in narrowband uh, H alpha to be exact probably my favorite wavelength uh, And I've been using this for basically my luminance data just to get that uh, grayscale contrasty light from the object uh, and then I've been blending that in with my RGB color images so the images I've been getting with the Hypercam 183C uh, combining the H alpha data with uh, with the RGB through a light pollution filter is uh, just blowing my mind from the city the uh, the power of narrowband filters from light pollution I can't stress it enough it's such a game changer a lot of times when I shoot these Astro Backyard videos uh, I end up not using the footage I shot just because uh, the day after I find out that uh, there's huge gaps, mis missing information that doesn't properly tell the story of, of, of what happened that night. Uh, last night was one of those nights I finally at 3 a.m. called it quits and just couldn't record on camera anymore. But I did capture some awesome data uh, using a slightly different imaging uh, configuration. And uh, I definitely want to share that with you so I'm going to piece it together uh, today, this morning, the day after. For starters, uh, last night I used a new guide scope, a larger guide scope. As you know, I've been using the Altair Starwave 50 millimeter guide scope and it's been working great with the uh, Altair GP Cam 2. And I did some research into whether upgrading to a larger guide scope would result in sharper images and better accuracy in PHD2 guiding. And there's uh, a lot of discussion on the topic, and I've heard everything from that the, race, the ratio of pixel size should be 3 to 1 from the pixel size in your main imaging scope to the pixel size in your guide scope. That was interesting. Uh, and if that's the case, the configuration I have right now is, uh, is off. It's more like 2 to 1. Um, and then I've also seen that uh, modern cameras and... Uh, PHD2 guiding has no problem getting the same level of results just using a mini 50 millimeter guide scope uh, like I was using before. So who knows? Either way, I wanted to try out a new guide scope. It's a larger telescope that I've owned, we've owned, it's actually my fiance's scope for um, a few years now, since 2012. I've never brought it out before and it's a William Optics Zenith Star 70ED. So why does Ashley have a telescope? No, not because she's, sec she's secretly an astrophotographer. She bought this telescope for bird photography. Um, she used it uh, like a super telephoto lens on a monopod and she would carry it around 
and uh, use, th use this focuser and take up close photos of uh, nature photography of birds and uh, it worked really well for that. So that's why she bought it. It was just her way around of get, uh, paying the big dollars for a telephoto camera lens. So I've had it in storage for, for years, like I said, and I just haven't used it for any astrophotography. But uh, she allowed me to last night. And uh, as you can see, I just mounted it to the uh, top bar here on the, uh, on the tube rings for my ED-102. I uh, kind of jimmied it here. <laughs> and it's, it's nice and secure. And I can actually get an even better balance than I could with the Altair um, auto guiding combo. Because as you can see, it's right down the middle of the center of the scope, as, to po as opposed to sitting off to the side here using the mount for the uh, finder scope. So the balance is spot on, better than, better than ever. And so I did see better guiding last, last night, and I, I wonder if it's due to the larger guide scope or just the fact that my balance is just a little bit better. I had to use uh, the second counterweight, the, even rustier than the first one, uh, to get this thing to balance, but um, I think it looks pretty cool having a medium-sized scope on there. So let's talk about what I shot last night. I couldn't help myself and I, I wanted to add some more data to uh, the Wizard Nebula project, even though I finalized that photo in the last video. Uh, I just felt that my luminance data, the HA, was a little weak. Uh, I had to stretch it a little too far, it was a little noisy as it was shot on a hot night. And last night was so cold, it was down to about 4 or 5 degrees, which is great for my uh, Hypercam 183C camera, nice and cool. The moon was out uh, last night and it was about 80% full, it didn't set until about 3 a.m. So that's why I decided to shoot narrowband last night, that's kind of the way I operate these days, color data when uh, the moon is gone narrow band when it's out. But then my main imaging target was the Bubble Nebula NGC 7635 in Cassiopeia. So I started that past the meridian uh, at about uh, 12 30, 1 o'clock. So I started shooting that and let the camera run on that until basically until it hit the trees. So when it was all said and done I captured 50 subs uh, three and a half minutes each on the Bubble Nebula. HA. Uh, those subs looked incredible and uh, like I said I noticed an improvement to my guiding using the new setup. The, uh, the graph looked good and just the, the image, the light frame uh, previews that I was seeing looked extra sharp. Uh, I'm sure it was due to the crisp cold air last night as well but I'm so excited to play with this data. So fifth, yeah, 50 subs, uh, three and a half minutes each on the Bubble Nebula and HA. Now this project is going, I'm going to do a full narrow band set of filters on this. HA being the first one, I'm going to capture 03 hopefully tonight. We've got a stretch of clear nights here. Uh, and I've heard that uh, 03 really makes a difference on the bubble nebula. You get that full bubble shape, which I've never been able to get before. Uh, back when I used to shoot the bubble nebula with uh, just my modded DSLR, man, I had to just pour the time onto it. And then even, even after six, seven hours, I just have to pull the data so hard to just to get anywhere close to what I was hoping for. I'm going to stack my data from last night, the narrow band on the wizard and uh, the bubble. I'll share my new and improved wizard nebula as well as the uh, grayscale narrow band uh, bubble nebula at the end of this video. Uh, I can't wait to play with that data. Like I said, it looked excellent with this, uh, this experimental auto guiding setup and uh, I think I may keep this for a while. I'm interested to know your thoughts on what you think uh, of my new auto guiding setup using a larger uh, refractor. I know a lot of you, uh, more the, the advanced guys, have some serious, uh, seriously nice refractors using as guide scopes and uh, I feel like there's probably a reason for that so uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. As well, um, if you haven't already, please uh, look for the Astro Backyard podcast. Uh, that's me and Steve Malia from Ontario Telescope and Accessories. Uh, we have a lot of conversations about uh, deep sky imaging. Uh, he's a really nice guy. If you if you hear us uh, talking astrophotography, it's just a it's a great conversation. We can all learn together. And because it's a podcast, you can listen to it on the in the car on your way to work. 
I know I've got a half hour commute every day, so uh, stuff like that's great. Kind of just surround myself with astrophotography. So check that out. Uh, make sure to follow the Facebook page. Um, I appreciate all the amazing comments as always. And uh, I look forward to an awesome fall of uh, deep sky astrophotography. Thanks everyone.